afternoon. I want to thank our our sponsor for this hour, which is the Lewis S. Hensley Jr. Family Foundation. Uh, today, I have the privilege of having a conversation with Sinead Dixon, and Sinead is trying to make the U.S. Women's National Para Wheelchair Basketball Team. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Happy to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm well. I am 31. I like long walks on the beach. No kidding. <laughs> um, I have a rare condition that causes me to get tumors in my brain and spinal cord, thus resulting in spinal cord injuries. Um, yeah, so that's essentially how I acquired my disability. Um, I like to play adaptive sports. Um, I have a non-medical home care company that's been a big motiva motivation for me to keep me independent and um, kind of give me a sense of purpose. Uh, what else do you want? How did you start playing wheelchair basketball? So in 2015 I had my first surgery on my spinal cord and in January of that year and they weren't anticipating me waking up essentially unable to use my legs um, because going into surgery I was still you really would not know that I had these tumors and um, so when I had the surgery I woke up essentially paralyzed started the process of you know therapy and I had my surgery out of town and so once I came back into town um, after being at home constantly by, by myself and going through rehab I was just kind of researching some activities for me to be able to do and then that's when I stumbled across the RHI sports program um, online and then I submitted the form and by August of that year I was they, I believe they had a basketball clinic that year and I went to that clinic and it's Marissa's history wow. history yeah it was it was an emotional moment I think because that was the first time you know I was in a place that everywhere you looked everyone had essentially a disability or was in chairs and whatnot and so um, it's kind of, you can just almost kind of felt like home because I had always played basketball prior to having a disability and I played through high school and things. And so to go to that clinic and once I was in the chair, even though it was terrible at first, um, you just felt like you're playing basketball, not in wheelchair basketball. So that is kind of how I got started. It's awesome that you just mm -hmm. decided to continue to play basketball mm -hmm. after. Uh, yeah. I think honestly it was a mental, it was part. I wanted to be play sports, but also just mental health wise, it was, um, I mean, when you're going through such a traumatic experience, whether it's, you know, you have a spinal cord injury from a, spot, from a car accident, or I'm considered non-traumatic because mine was through surgery, but the experience in its totality is very much traumatic when you wake up a totally, with totally different abilities than what you had. So basketball has helped you with the... For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty crucial. Just, I mean, just like anyone else, like remaining active is very important for everyone's mental health. Um, but it is very. It's a little bit more difficult for someone who has a disability to find just sports to play or just you know casual pickup teams and things mm -hmm. like that. So having the sports program to be able to allow kind of a definite, you know. I know that if I'm a part of the sports program, either I can play basketball or I can try a different sport or a different activity and just kind of see what's out there for, you know, adaptive hmm. sports. When did, you, when did you develop this interest in playing for the women's national team? So, pretty soon after, so I believe in 2016, the USA basketball, they'll have, um, so like camps almost where you can come and see essentially what training is like and so I went to the Paralympic uh, training center in Birmingham was the first one that I went to first camp that I went to and it was after I had played one my first season yeah. and I went to that camp and the coaches were just kind of like you're you're good you've only been playing for not very long you know one season so honestly a few months at that point and they were just like you know we believe that you would be an asset if you continue to develop and um, you know continue with the sport and so that essentially piqued my interest at first 
Um, and then just kind of as I continued to play, it kind of solidified that it would be something that I would like to do. Um, I was also like contacted by a couple colleges to see if I wanted to go and play and get my master's. I wasn't totally set on. The basketball aspect sounded great. The going back to school aspects, not so much. <laughs> And so, um, so yeah, I decided not to go the college route, but as far as the USA team, that has always been, ever since then, it's been a kind of a goal in the back of, back of my mind that I would want to complete, so. Mm -hmm. What sacrifices have you had to make to? Well, honestly, so with my particular condition, I, I've had another spinal cord injury last year because uh, I had to have another tumor removed and so I'm a bit different when it comes to most athletes whereas their injury is one and done almost you know as far as their abilities that they have whereas I still have brain tumors I still have tumors in my spinal cord that cause problems and I still have to have other surgeries so my ability prior to July 7th of last year is different than what I have now and I'm still very much recovering but with that being said, I've had to, essentially, when I found out that I needed to have another surgery, I had to not necessarily put my Paralympic dreams on hold, so it wasn't a total sacrifice, but it definitely was a, my life, my health is constantly changing, mm -hmm. um, and so I definitely wanted to focus on Kind of getting a little bit of st stability in my life and um, so that's kind of why I focused on getting my business to a point to where I knew that I was would be financially set regardless of what my what may happen with my health and so in a way I guess it wouldn't necessarily be a sacrifice so much as just kind of to put it on hold for a second to make sure I just because stability is just very important and I didn't want to have another surgery and be homeless <laughs> again because I couldn't work or anything like that so yeah I mean yeah I guess that's probably one of the ways in which I've had to make a bit of a sacrifice what's the path <clears throat> what's the path forward now to make the um so to? I went to the women's nationals a couple months ago and I that was honestly my first time playing since probably 2019 just because I had to, I just had to take some time off to just kind of get some things in order to prepare for my surgery last year. Um, and so playing, it allowed me to see that my abilities are different and it allowed me to see, you know, areas where I need to improve as I continue to go on. Um, and so honestly, the biggest step towards the national team is being able to play in my city or just having a team in my city and having the resources that allow us to get consistent practice and get consistent um, just experience playing the sport um, because it's it's a little bit difficult to make a national team if all the time leading up into the USA tryouts there is I can't play on a sport mm -hmm. team or in order for me to play on a sport team then I would have to travel to Chicago or somewhere else like that so that's why the sports foundation here and the sports program here, here is pretty crucial to the success of anyone who wants to become an elite athlete or kind of go down that, that path. So kind of getting focused on training again and playing in my city and just kind of dusting some of the rust, yeah. <laughs> rust off. So. Get back into it. Mm -hmm. How has RHI sports program helped you? Um, well, just as I mentioned before, you know, it's the sports is the sports aspects of the sports program is great but honestly what makes it as beneficial and just as impactful as it as it has been for me is the sense of community that comes from being involved in the sports program and just meeting other individuals that are like you and when you all are together there is no um, it's almost like a safe space that you know Everyone has their clubs and their places that they feel at home where they can feel like they can be themselves or talk about things that you wouldn't necessarily talk about maybe in mixed company or so that has been pretty, pretty
pretty crucial for for me so that is I would say that's probably the biggest thing is just being able to have community and just create make friends that I would otherwise not have known because honestly it's outside of the sports program there's very few ways in which to um, just kind of get to know other people with disabilities outside of you know the standard support groups and mm -hmm. not everybody wants to go to a support group and talk about things that are depressing <laughs> not depressing but you know but relevant so what, to you yeah impact or impactful to you and so when you're it's this when you're with the people that play sports it's just we are athletes that have you know common interests mm -hmm. and yeah it's um so yeah that's probably the biggest one of the w biggest ways in which and they help keep me in shape, the sports program. Mm -hmm. But I would say the, big, the biggest thing is the community, and that's honestly probably what has helped me the, the most. And also just being involved in volunteering and mentoring some of the younger students or athletes um, kind of helps with a little bit of a sense of purpose and knowing that I, too, want to see the sports pro program grow. And it's grown a bit even since I've joined a few years ago. So, um, yeah. I want to wish you luck on your journey to make the women's national team and what I've gotten to know about you. I yeah. have uh, every confidence that you're going to make it. So. Well, thank you. It's great to spend some time with you. Same. Happy to be thank here. You. Thanks. Um, Shanae isn't successful. The program isn't successful without donors like you helping us out. Um, I happen to help out with the hockey program and RHI has been a huge benefit to us, but it does take money and it takes help. And as Shanae said, so adequately pointed out that it's not just a sport, it's the mental health aspect of how we help people, of how people get help through RHI sports and what they do. So there's a link in your, uh, in the Facebook Live below here. Please click on it and consider donating. Um, thank you.